originally thought this was going to be such an easy project, but it ended up being one of those where just every single thing went wrong. <laughs> to the point where I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to make this into a video. So this all started because I need a nice medieval cloak for a very specific reason. Well, I mean, I kind of always want fancy clothes in case I get whisked off to a magical world and need to go on a quest. I need to be prepared. But specifically in this case, I am going to be attending my first ever LARP later this year. For those of you who don't know, LARP stands for Live Action Roleplay. Uh, so essentially, I am going to be traveling to a different country to go live in the woods to play a giant game of pretend with a bunch of other adults. And I am so hyped! <laughs> It'll be like Dungeons and Dragons, except you're just like actually there. The event I'm planning on going to is called Beakalian. It is a giant immersive game in Canada where I will essentially be spending a week living as a fantasy character. It looks so freaking cool and I've been wanting to go for years and this is finally the year I get to go. And since I'm essentially going to be living in this medieval village for a week, I need a week's worth of medieval clothing, which I do not currently have. And one item that they keep on emphasizing is essential is to have a good cloak because you're going to be outside, it's going to rain, it's going to get cold, and you will be miserable if you don't have a cloak to keep you dry and warm. But after doing a little bit of researching, I found out that a good waterproof cloak is uh, kind of expensive. <laughs> So me being me just went, I can make it myself. What is it? A few triangles that I got to sew together. Look at all these YouTube tutorials. This is going to be a breeze. You know what? It's going to be so easy. I'll even be a little extra. I'm going to design it to be a little celestial starry night cloak so I can live out my little night elf fay dreams. Oh, oh, and while I'm at it, what if I see if I can spend like the least amount of money on it as possible? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> So let's go back to the beginning of this project when I was still so full of hope and see how this went so terribly wrong. Okay, so let's talk about what materials to use for this cloak. If you are someone who is just making a cloak to add to your character for the Ren Fair and it's way more for aesthetics and just looking cool, in that case you can pretty much use whichever material that you want, whether you go and just buy a cool fabric or if you go to a thrift store and just find some old blankets to turn into a cloak. Or if you are someone looking to make a cloak that is definitely more functional, if you are going to be just wearing it in the winter or wearing it to a LARP, in that case you're probably going to want a wool fabric. Not only is wool really good at keeping you warm, but wool is kind of naturally water resistant and even when it does start to absorb water, it'll take a lot of water before it actually starts soaking in to where you can feel it. The only problem with that is that wool is a much more expensive material to buy and probably a lot harder to find old blankets in thrift stores or something like that. They do have like military wool blankets on Amazon that you could buy and turn into it, so that's definitely an option. But for me, the purpose of this cloak, I really do want it to be water resistant but I don't really want it to be like too warming. <laughs> because I live in Florida, if I made this a wool cloak, I would not be able to wear it to any events like 90% of the time. So the material that I'm going to be using is actually the material that uh, Skilltree suggested in his video on cloaks. And that is just some canvas drop cloth. You know that thing that you put on the floors when you're painting? I thought that was so smart because you can literally just go to any home improvement store and you can buy like a lot of fabric for pretty cheap. This one is four feet by 15 feet. So that's like five yards of fabric for $22, I believe it was. And since the whole purpose of it is to keep paint and spills from getting on the floor, canvas is probably going to be a lot better at protecting you from the rain. And we're going to be doing a little bit of waterproofing for it later. So let's go ahead and open this up to see what we're working with. I'm probably definitely going to need more space than this. <laughs> say this fabric is not that wide. It's very long but not wide. Okay now for the pattern it really depends on what kind of style of cloak that you want. There's a lot of really easy like no sew patterns. If you are looking for like more of a ranger cloak there is the Rwanda cloak that is very popular. I want mine to definitely have a more elegant kind of elven look to it. Really playing into that celestial theme. So I went to Etsy and I ended up buying and downloading a pattern. I think it was like $3, but honestly, there's a lot of free patterns as well. So just pick what your preference is. Honestly, this is a pretty simple pattern. Like it's mostly just triangles. It's honestly just such a big pattern that it's going to take like 50 pages to print that I have to then tape together. 
One negative about online uh, digital downloads, it's normally pretty cheap for the prints, but then there's a lot of after work you gotta do. <laughs> As to not make you suffer through me having to tape all these papers together, I think now would be a fantastic time to tell you about this video sponsor, Helix. When I moved into my first place and needed to buy my first ever mattress, I kind of just went with the most generic foam mattress I could find online, thinking that most mattresses would be about the same. But when I unpacked it and finally got to feel the mattress, I immediately knew that I messed up. I'm the kind of person who wants to feel like they're being held on a cloud while they sleep. And this was no cloud. And I was stuck with it and reminded of this decision every single night. But with Helix, they are all about finding the right premium mattress that works for you. With Helix's sleep quiz, I was able to tell them my body type, my sleeping preferences, so they were able to match me up with the best mattress that made me feel the most comfortable. Helix then delivers the mattress straight to your door, so all you have to do is unroll and you're good to go. Oh. <laughs> So for me, I'm a stomach sleeper and I normally enjoy a softer feel and I also tend to overheat at night because you know, it's Florida. So Helix matched me with their Moonlight mattress. It is so soft while still being supportive. And then I also picked the Glacier Tech pillow top to help keep me cool at night. Plus they also include these pillows which are just as soft and fluffy. It was honestly so simple to set up and it's also cat approved as well. You can order Helix worry-free because you get a 100 night sleep trial to try out your mattress and ensure that you love it. Plus Helix mattresses have a 10 year warranty and they even offer financing options and flexible payment plans. You can visit helixsleep.com slash justless to get 20% off your mattress plus two free pillows and start finding your perfect mattress today. Thank you once again to Helix for sponsoring this video and now it's time to get back to the project, which means I'm going to have to get up from this really soft mattress, which I really, I really don't want to do at this moment. One 90 second ad later, and now I have all my patterns taped together and ready to lay on the fabric. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I thought this canvas was way more fabric than it actually was, but it's like two back panels and then two front panels that I need to cut out. So this is the tarp folded over so I can cut both of those at the same time. And there's not a lot of room left. Like I still need to cut the hood after this and I I don't know if there's enough room. <laughs> like the pattern told me what dimensions I need to buy a fabric and instead of comparing the two just went like, it'll probably work. <laughs> Okay, good news actually. So I cut out the two front and the two back panels. There's just this tiny sliver of fabric over here, which is, if you position it directly like that, is just the amount of space that I need to finish the pattern. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely satisfying, but how dare they make me think I have to run back out to Home Depot. a lot of fabric, the sewing should be theoretically pretty easy for this one because the majority of the cloak itself is just four panels. So theoretically, it should just be stitching straight lines. I'm hoping because I hate sewing. I can't believe I'm doing two sewing projects in a row. <laughs> it's not so much something I enjoy doing, but I just love the idea of being able to make my own whimsical clothes, you know? The cape part of the cloak went pretty easy since it was just sewing the four panels together with a straight stitch. And even though this was the first part, I was already having fun swinging it around for dramatic <laughs> flair. Next up, there were a few items in this pattern that I just ignored, like this collar and yoke. I got confused on the instructions, so I just gave up and moved on to the hood, which was just sewing the two parts together and then folding over and hemming all the edges, which took the longest. And here we have our cloak. The thing that honestly just took the longest was hemming all the sides because there's just so much fabric. There are going to be buttons holding it together, but I need to wait until after I dye the fabric before adding those. So for now, I finally get to use this little bad boy. Hopefully this works. Oh, now I'm hands-free and ready to go to Mordor. The hood is definitely so dramatic. Hello, yes, it is I. The mysterious hood figure in the corner, ready to give your level one adventuring party their first quest. All right, now that we have our base cloak, let's work on giving it a little bit more flair now, shall we? All right, so it is time to die. Our fabric, a nice, lovely color. I've used that joke so many times and will continue to do so. Comedy gold. All right, so I have a few different colors of dye over here because I am going to be attempting to do a dip dive at first, I thought this would be pretty easy just because I'm going to follow the instructions on the back of the bottle. 
which first starts out by cooking up some hot water. And then adding in a little bit of salt and some soap to apparently help the color stay, at least according to Ritz. I just imagine that I'm making a fun little potion. Okay, time to add more water and even more water, you know, just completely ignoring a measurements. I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, so the first one I'm going to be starting off with is just the royal blue one. Uh, this is hopefully going to be our lightest color. If I want to get real wild, I can maybe add a little bit of teal in there because I have let that left over from another project, but we'll see. After mixing up the dye, I went ahead and tested a little strip of fabric to make sure I liked the color, and it was a little light to me. So I went ahead and started mixing in a tiny bit of the navy blue, and then just jumping in with all of the fabric. After making sure everything is submerged, it was recommended to continuously stir it to make sure everything dyed even. And I guess this is just what I'm doing for the next 30 minutes. Just keep stirring my potion. Potion cellar. Potion Sela, I need your strongest potion. You could not handle my strongest potion. No, oh, it's dripping on me. Oh no. I should probably turn on the podcast so I stop talking to myself, huh? <laughs> All right, now I'm just gonna add the rest of the navy to this, so hopefully it'll have a really nice gradient. Okay, to dip dye, theoretically all I have to do is kind of just dip the bottom of the cloak in and out. So theoretically, it will have a nice blended transition from dark to light. The blue canvas kind of looks like denim. Am I making a jean cloak? What, what would a jean cloak be? A, jo a, a, a joke? <laughs> I'm making a joke. <laughs> I have, uh, once again, dyed my hands blue for a project. If I had a nickel for every time I accidentally dyed my hands blue on this channel, I have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but does mean I didn't learn from my mistakes. <laughs> All I have to do now is wait for the clothes to go through a rinse cycle, and then it's going to dry and everything will be fine, right? So I washed the cloak. We seem to have a little bit of an issue. The first being, this is just not the color I wanted in the slightest. I was going for like a dark midnight blue and I got pale jorts. <laughs> oh yeah, and dip dyeing, it didn't do anything either. Also an issue of probably just me not knowing how to actually finish a seam, but all of the inside seams are just like completely frayed at this point. So that's, that's not the best. <laughs> So looking back, what I think the problem was is the fact that I did not use enough dye for the amount of fabric that I was dyeing. Like I filled it with so much water to make sure that it could move around freely that it diluted the dye too much. And that's why it's just like not the right color at all. So I think I'm going to go, I'm going to re-dye it. So I went out and I got a few more bottles of the navy blue and also just straight up black to kind of mix to make sure it gets that dark color towards the end. I'm going to try again, hopefully just with a better ratio of dyed water so it'll actually get that color. Yeah, I must have used like one fifth of the amount of water that I used the first time and probably like double the dye. <laughs> and also very timidly putting in black to try and darken it as well. This one is a lot less water and seems to be doing a way better job getting the saturation of the dye. Now for another rinse and another dry cycle. Uh. <laughs> it looks exactly the same. I think it's like a tad bit darker, but overall it looks basically the same. I didn't think this, this part would be the issue of this project. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's because it's the material that's the problem because I look online of people like dyeing canvas tote bags and stuff like that and it's fine. I still think I need to use more dye, but I'm not sure if that's 100% what the problem is and I don't want to go through the whole dyeing process again just for it to not have another result. And I've already used so much dye during this project, I don't want to keep on just wasting material. This is so annoying. Sunk cost fallacy. I think I have to try one more time. One more time. I wanted that starry night color. Desperate this time, I think I used one gallon of water and like two bottles of dye. The fabric literally looked black by the end of it, so I thought it was going to be enough to finally soak through. 
okay, let it die for a lot longer this time than last time, so if that was a problem, hopefully that'll fix it. I've used so much more dye this time. It looks like it's a dark enough color, but also it looked like a dark enough color last time. So I'm just going to throw it in for a rinse cycle, and if it doesn't work, I might cry. A little bit. <sighs> After three times of dyeing it, this is, I think, the best I'm going to get. It's technically darker, but it's kind of gray now. I mean, at least on the bright side, it's still like a functioning cloak. And one that you can wear that doesn't look like you're cheap. It doesn't look like a costume. If anything, it would probably match more into a medieval setting because it's not super saturated. But I just wanted it to be more whimsical. But now it's... it's very dull. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try and treat this to be waterproof to at least check off that requirement. I mean, if it doesn't look as pretty, oh well, but it's like, if it doesn't function, then I'm going to be mad. <laughs> So a popular treatment that people will do to cloaks to waterproof them would be normally using beeswax, but I am going to try out this waterproofing treatment. If it works, it's going to be a way heck of a lot cheaper and a heck of a lot easier because all I have to do is soak it for about 10 minutes in it. No idea if this is going to work or not. It's the right color again though, so that's cool. Or run it through rinse cycle, tumble it, we'll see if it works. Okay. Time to test if it's waterproof or if I just wasted another spin cycle on this. Unfortunately, there's no rain scheduled this week, so this is the closest way I have to test it for now. But things were looking promising. Huh? Yeah, completely dry. Just to make sure, I tested it on the untreated fabric as well. Oh yeah, there's definitely a difference. This is seeping through and the other one's pretty much dry. It definitely had a huge impact because the water droplets were just pulling on top and just rolling around instead of the untreated one that absorbed pretty quickly. So as of right now, I'm going to say this is waterproof until proven otherwise. Now, in order to actually close my cloak, I'm going to actually use a little bit of leftover leather crafting supplies. Originally, the pattern called for buttons, or you can maybe just keep on using a brooch as well. But since I had the leftover supplies, I thought making a little clasping belt would be a nice little touch. Basically, all I needed was two little strips of leather, the little buttons I got with my leather kit, then just a singular o-ring. I attached the receiver to one side of the leather, and then I attached the other side to the fabric. Now I can snap the leather around the o-ring and easily secure my cloak. Finally, one thing has gone right during this project. <laughs> Again, you can also just use regular buttons or a brooch or something like that as well, but I think this is a nice little touch. So technically, as of right now, this is a fully functional cloak that will theoretically keep you safe from the weather, that would be perfectly fine for any Ren Fair or LARP that you're going to. But where is the whimsy, I ask? Even though I couldn't get it that dark midnight color, I think I'm still going to add the stars. Even if it's not exactly what I thought it was going to be, I still want to try and give it a little bit of that flair. Also, I have a new tool that I want to try. As of recently, I found this in the clearance section. It's this thing called the foil quill, which I've had my eye on for like such a long time, but it's a little bit expensive. Even on clearance, it was a bit expensive. <laughs> These are essentially little pens that you plug in that will heat up and will allow you to then freestyle whatever design that you want onto either like leather or in this case fabric. And I think this is going to be really good for getting all those little star details. So let's give these a try. We're gonna do a little test sample over here. This is either going to be just like super easy and the coolest thing to use or it's going to just be the hugest paint. There's never an in-between. <laughs> hmm okay. I see how it is. So I tried it on a few materials. So it definitely works the best on paper, like it actually had a really good result. Leather wasn't as clean, but still pretty good. And on the spare fabric I had, also worked well. The only thing it did not work on was the canvas that the cloak was made out of. I, I didn't have a backup plan if this didn't work. The stars would be too small to cut out on the cricket. Do I just leave this as a plain cloak? Is that an interesting enough video? Am I even going to have a video for my deadline? I have one last ditch idea to maybe make this work. Really hope none of my neighbors are walking by. Okay. I was just going to try and paint on the effects that I wanted. What if, now that it hasn't worked and we have this like darker base color, what if we just have the darker base color on top and then have it add like the lighter blues 
as it goes down the bottom, and then we just paint on the stars to give it that sort of starry night look. And hopefully since I'm using the airbrush, it'll make a nice gradient so it's not going to look too weird. Although now that I think about it, I wonder if the water resistance is going to resist the paint. I'm not going to think about that right now. We're just going to see what happens. Okay, we're going to start in the back first in case it's not good. I did very quickly realize that it was not nearly as saturated as I thought it would be. Also, it's taking forever to get any sort of coverage from it. <laughs> but you still could see some of the gradient kind of coming through, at least like the top transition of it. So there's a little hope. It has signs that it might be working out, but it also might just be ruining this whole cloak, so... If it's uneven, can I just call it galaxy? Remember when everything used to be galaxy in like 2016? Yeah, the more I try to blend it, honestly, the more uneven it got. Alright, I think I've gotten it as good as it's going to get. It kind of just looks like a mishmash, and especially like in direct sunlight, you can see all the different colors. I'm just going to throw on some paint as stars and hopefully that brings it together. If not, this project's still going to be done anyway. I, I cannot spend, I am literally out of time for this project. Okay, a really simple trick to put on like a lot of stars is just to load up a dry brush and just start using the brush to fling the paint on, which worked for a total of five seconds. Not even this is working. It's just absorbing too fast and it just absorbs <laughs> the most cursed project I have ever done. And that's where I officially called this project. So this project is weird because like I kind of succeeded but I also failed a lot. And I think it's genuinely my first failed project video <laughs> and it feels a little odd. Although that's just part of being creative is sometimes failing and learning from your mistakes. I mean, I did end up with a working cloak at the end, but I just wasn't able to do any of the cool extra stuff I wanted. And maybe that was just a limitation of the material that I chose, where it's really good for a utilitarian purpose, but if I wanted to do anything decorative, it just would not work with me. While my initial vision for this project might have failed, there's still one last thing I want to test if it worked or not. It's time to see if this cloak can actually hold up to some weather. The very scientific test. It worked a little. Not necessarily, it's not, it's not waterproof. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't even really waterproof. It's definitely kind of water resistant, but definitely not waterproof. Just another X on the list of things that have gone wrong this project. Well, even though it's not my normal, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if this is the first video you're seeing of mine. Um, I normally do better. I, I have some cool other videos of me making cool stuff where I make like cool books and things. The books I'm really good at. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.